Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we thank you tonight for what you will do in the lives of the people that you have gathered unto yourselves. Uh, we ask that you do us good and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We have decided to dedicate today as a day of feedback we've been preaching for 16 days straight and uh, uh, we wanted to create a window for a feedback mechanism and so we have a catalog of questions these are the questions we're able to extract from the feedback and we trust God for wisdom to bring perspective to the concerns of the people of God before we start responding to the questions, I want to first of all say uh, that I am not a custodian of all knowledge. So it is possible that one of the questions that is presented here, I may not have an answer for it. If, if we are in agreement on that, then I can proceed uh, with, with uh, the answers. And then secondly, in issues where I don't seem to feel that I have a worthy response to the questions. We have a, an isolated cloud of witness here that is socially distanced. And we might want to call upon any of the brethren that are physically present to respond. Amen. I say amen. Well, the first question comes from a brother called Emmanuel, and the initial that followed is C, Emmanuel C. And Emmanuel C said, Sir, you said you prayed to have the consciousness of God to be able to overcome lying in your Easter sermon. How long and how much did you pray to have a revelation of the consciousness of God that enabled you to overcome lying? And how can one apply the same to overcome a sin challenge? A sin challenge. Now, we were drawing from the book of Romans, chapter 6. I think I need to read that verse of scripture before I begin to respond to you. You need to see the full package of deliverables in the book of Romans, chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 The Bible says likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord I was on that scripture And then we're also on the scripture in the book of Romans chapter 8 Where we established what it means uh, to be conscious of God There were many admonitions that people like someone like Apostle Paul gave us Which suggests a consciousness of God that comes to us by reason of a revelation that is given unto us It was Paul that said know ye not <clears throat> That you are the temple of the Lord and that the Holy Spirit dwelleth in you. It is very, the average Christian knows that the Holy Spirit dwells in him. But that statement that Paul was saying, are you not aware? It means it will have to come to you as a revelation that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. That revelation leaves you with a consciousness. Leaves you with a consciousness. 
and by the time you want to join yourself with something that is iniquity that consciousness will become your first line of defense against every arsenal of sin that is thrown at your life all right we get this kind of questions whenever we are tending to believers the believer normally comes up with a, a how long question how long should i pray in order for me to qualify to come into an economy how long does it take in order for the gates of heaven to be open to you and for god to occasion a manifestation now the only thing that bible never tells us is how long because how long for me might be two years and that is held up in the sovereignty of god how long for you might be 14 years how long for you might be six months what we teach are the guiding principles so that anyone that is seeking a pilgrimage with god will know what to expect and the principles to apply but we have gone beyond teaching if we know how long it will take because that is held up in god's authority and the scripture i have for this is in the book of acts of the apostles chapter one when the disciples came and asked the lord let me read the question and probably also read the answer to us in the book of acts chapter one there was a question when they were therefore come together verse 6 they asked him saying lord will thou at this time restore the kingdom unto israel and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the season which the father has put in his own authority in his own authority so the how long of a spiritual exercise the spiritual um, activity is held up in god's authority and it is different for each individual and uh, probably it would have even been shorter for me if i had obeyed as swiftly as god intended and so there's a human factor also that determines how long it might be there is no text no scripture no wisdom by which a teacher can bring that kind of information to you with respect to your own peculiar work with god you are going to have to discover the how long by your compliance with the principles of the lord and then that will become a very veritable tool that you will um, use to teach other people but i think that brother uh, you need to seek the lord and in seeking the lord there is an encounter that he will administer to you and that encounter is you cannot retain the consciousness of God outside of a revelation a revelation now there were revelations I had from God encounters I had from God with respect to my stammering those revelations are st I'm still conscious of them till now meanwhile I studied chemistry uh, many years ago there are many equations I've forgotten I know just a little in chemistry right now because I've not practiced chemistry we went and began to practice something else uh, so I studied it for four years I don't remember so much of it anymore but the revelation I had the encounters I had with the Lord many years ago I still remember them because encounters leaves a consciousness behind so um, brother Emmanuel I recommend that you um, take the issue of the sin that is in your life to God and express to God how that you are absolutely incapable of overcoming that sin and how desperately you need his involvement in order for you to overcome that barricade you are going to have an experience with God which is going to be unique to your situation sponsored by the economy of God and victory will be registered thereby we have another brother here he is Odeon brother Odeon from the United States of America maybe I will turn uh, this question over to 
another individual in this great assembly to provide a response for our brother. It's a good day, sir. My question is how do I study the Bible and understand it? I get tired easily when I study. Can you recommend a study pattern for me? Also, I recently purchased some of your materials from Amazon, but they are not in paper form. I received them in a form of a link. Thank you. Yes, um, Apostle Michael Ropo, you have been studying your Bible, so come on, can you respond to this brother quickly? Um, you can afford him the services of the microphone so that he can respond to brother how, uh, how do you what do you have to say about this brother that is desirous of studying his bible but it gets boring it gets tiring and he needs some form of technical support yes you don't need to stand up just meanwhile you can flash flash his face so that uh, brother Odion will see who is responding to him Thank you, sir, for this privilege. Um, I would like to refer him to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Paul was um, admonishing Timothy, and he said, Until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. He said, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. So there are two blocks. The first block is the approach. And he said, you read. Reading is just to make a habit of interacting with the word of God as frequent as possible. Okay. It's not necessarily a study. It's just taking advantage of maybe a hunger for the knowledge of God. These things come sometimes after an encounter or after a meeting. You hear somebody expound on scripture and suddenly you find that you have a hunger for the word of God. You respond quickly. And as you start reading, Paul said the next thing to do is exhortation. Exhortation is doctrinal positions and truths of scriptures that have been expounded by those that have understanding. So as you listen to some of these topics by ministers of the gospel that talks directly to your spirit, you would grow in your love for the word of God. And thirdly, he said doctrine. That's where study, real study comes in. Now you have a general understanding of scripture by reading. You have paid attention to exhortations on various teachings. And then you now sit down, you pick love and you check the scriptures on love. You look at it, you begin to pick them by blocks. And Paul said, when you are doing this, this is the organic dimension to it, which is the second block. He said, meditate on these things. So when you lay hold on the truth, you don't just add it to a library of knowledge. You sit on it, set your mind and affection on it, and allow your spirit to internalize it. He said, when you meditate, give yourself wholly. So it's not something you do in a distracted environment. Create space for God to come into your life. He said, then your profiting will be made manifest to all. So it's reading, exhortation, doctrine, coupled or carried out in the atmosphere of meditation and a total commitment of yourself to it. Wonderful. Um, Brother Boniface, I wanted to add something to that as we respond to Brother Odeo. He wants to spice up his Bible study life. So Thank what you, can, sir. Yes. One of the things I learned from my little experience with God is this. When you want to go to God, you don't go with any idea of sufficiency. You, you, you go weak to be strengthened. You must completely surrender, give up any idea of a will or an understanding. And so when you go completely living on, um, depending on, on God, you will begin to 
to, to occasion his dimensions in your life. And so, uh, when you are weak, he will strengthen you. When you go poor of knowledge, of worldly um, attachments, that are either certificate or whatever you think, wherever you think you are standing, he will give you a platform. And so if God gives you a platform, I think you will move faster than whatever you think you know. Amen. I want to read the scripture quickly. It's in the book of Acts chapter 8. It's in the book of Acts chapter 8 from verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south unto the way that went down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. And he arose. And he went, and behold, the man of Ethiopia, a new knock of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He read what? Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit of of God said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. The first question that Philip asked when he, he got there was, Understandest what thou readest? Understandest what thou readest. There, there are a lot of discoveries that we make when we study this functionary from Ethiopia. The first discovery we make about this functionary <laughs> is that he, he was one of the few functionaries that came for this worship meeting that left with a scroll. Uh, and uh, when you discover his portfolio, he was a minister of finance of Ethiopia. So it seems the guy had dropped an offering. And the offering had sent a wave, a shock wave through the financial basket. And there was a need to acknowledge the seed of all the books in the archives because the books were in scrolls. Isaiah <laughs> was given to the man. And while he was returning, he was reading it loud because the evangelist could hear the reading that the man was doing. And the first thing that Philip said when he joined the chariot was, Understandest thou what thou readest. Uh, and the man gave an answer. And he said, How can I accept a man should guide me? Except a man should guide me. Your initial adventure into Bible study. Is not likely to be very profitable. You must, first of all, take advantage of the rich spoken ministry of any servant of God that God has connected your spirit with. You must be a student under that man first and foremost. You have heard my story before. I was and still am a student of Watchman Nee's ministry. I found his materials and I bought every single one that I had the resources to buy every single one that I saw I bought and I studied it so much and I preached it for a long time before the spirit of inspiration opened and through the studies and the spirit that I had received from engaging in those materials I was able to launch my own personal Bible study and it was as sweet as the books that I read. How can I understand except a man guide me? When you doctrine, understanding the truth of the word of God <laughs> is something that God has given some people the grace for. And it is easier for you to latch onto the frequency of that grace and prosper from that grace and bountifully take advantage of that grace in the life of 
maybe it might be a physical person that has a spoken ministry and has messages or it might be through a book for me it was a book and my start of material was this what money's book that was called uh, the normal christian life i still have a copy of that book and i will have until my last day upon the face of the earth no other book in the entire scope of christian literature ever blessed me as much as that book did because in that book the expositions that were in that book i saw the desires that i had i had the desire to be a a a, a, a an expert exposit, expositor in the word of God and I found everything that I wanted to be in the ministry of Watchman Nee so it was easy for me to submit to that ministry and I don't want to be more than that ministry I want to be exactly and the exact representation of that spirit because that spirit was so accurate the spirit of revelation that was upon that man's ministry was so accurate and I felt that if I could be this accurate in my generation if this would be the sign of my ministry, accuracy in doctrine, I'll be satisfied. So I worked with his materials for a long time. I was discipled by his materials and I inherited the spirit with which he exposes scripture. And on the strength of that spirit, I was able to make personal discoveries in the scripture. How can I understand except a man guide me second point i need to raise is in the book of daniel chapter 9 daniel chapter 9 in daniel chapter 9 verse 1 and verse 2 the bible says in the first year of darius son of ahasuerus of the seed of the medes which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books. You will need some books to understand the book. So, I have a very robust Bible software. And in that software, I have commentaries, I have concordances, I have maps i have charts i have i have um finance because sometimes in scripture exchange money i have all those things there do you understand so when i'm reading and i come to a point and i'm stuck i consult those books you might consult seven of them and what you the response you get from those books are not satisfactory it doesn't satisfy the yearning the research that you wanted to do you don't seem to find any contribution from all of those materials sometimes you might find sometimes you may not but there is another addition to what i said there is the place for human guidance there is also the place of researching widely this is not revelational this thing that daniel did was research not revelation for instance before i come here for any contact i have extensively researched on the subject matter just in case there is someone listening to me that is well exposed in scripture in theology he is well advanced I will still be relevant my ministry will still be relevant to him because it is adequate apart from the spiritual substance it is adequately researched so that people that are highly intellectual in their relationship with the scriptures can find uh, the kind of ministration that will reach them I Daniel understood my books you might have a huge library and that library might be totally irrelevant in fact they are, it is recommended that we need to screen our library it's not every book you need to read even though people might give you books people might feel okay you need to read this in fact somebody sent me a carton of books a carton of books and I've not read anyone yet because the kind of books I need now is outside of the scope of what the person sent to me 
There were books that were on my shelf for 12 years that I did not touch. It was after 12 years that they became relevant. So you need to, may the Lord help you to be able to know which books, which book fits into, in terms of Christian literature, fits into the scope of the dealings of God on your life. If not, you will get lost in reading and you'll never get any understanding. So there are support books that you uh, conduct your research with. I have a wide range of such support books. When I want to crack some codes in scripture, I, I go very wide, very wide. Those support books, there are some researches you might stumble upon that might give breath to the hunger uh, that is in your spirit. And you are likely thereby to understand by books. Let me stop here for now so that I don't get to preach a sermon. If you put what um, Apostle Mike, what um, Brother Boniface, and the little that I shared together, you will get something to start with, I believe. The next question is somebody saying, You made mention of fasting 260 days and praying for one year but you did not but the answer didn't come immediately my question is how did that 260 days impact your relationship with god well if that's your, if what i think your question is is what it is there is no spiritual initiative that you put in place that will not bring profit to you whether you have a goal for it or not but what, i must say something about the 260 days of fasting and prayer that i did the fasting came on me the desire to fast came on me it was not it's not a regular okay my regular schedule now for fasting is that i open the year with 40 days of praying and fasting that's the new directive i received from god I don't need to be led. I'm already led. That if the year is starting, the way I start my year is that I go for 40 days prayer and fasting. And God witnessed this to me and I found out that in the life of some people I respect, that happens to be their culture. What I'm saying is not a schedule of fasting. What I'm saying is the desire to fast just fell on me. And it was not as if I didn't make attempts to begin to eat, but anytime I ate, I purged. So it was it was beyond my <laughs> my doing. And I continued like that in the fast. And there was so much grace, there was so much grace, there was so much grace. And the whole year was almost consumed. And I know some of you here have had such experiences before. Is there anybody that has that? Okay. Yes, okay. Please come on. To share your own experience to this brother. I, I think he wants to be, Brother Odion wants to be a mighty spiritual man. The kind of questions he's asking. So let us help him with all, all the tools. Uh, what, have you had supernatural fasting experiences before? Yes. Um, Can you flash his face? Okay, yeah. Good. Yes, it was exactly in 2013, um, around September. I was um, I was just fasting for. We usually fast during the weekend. Okay. Um, and I said, okay, let me just fast because I've just I've just been transferred to a new uh, territory, new station. So I was just observing a fast. All of a sudden, I discovered I couldn't stop it, and that protracted uh, until I had um, to build. There was a building project also that was going on. And I discover I tried to stop this as much as I tried to stop the fast. The fasting would not stop. I go to the office every morning and before I come back, it's in the night. And every day is just like that. How long did it last? It lasts for one year. One good year. Okay. Turn your, uh, the microphone to um, Sister Dojima because people are now thinking only, only men fast, only guys fast. Uh, now, Apart from this kind of fasting he is talking about, is apart from the normal schedules of fasting we do. This is a supernatural summon to participate in an agenda 
that is at stake in heaven and God needs your partnership he needs your participation and whether you like it or not he takes the desire for food from you and if you violate it you will purge it is until that agenda is accomplished that God will not relax it then you can continue your normal one if you do five days fasting per week you can continue that one but this one is supernatural have you ever had that experience before yes sir you, you have it frequently yes sir so what how frequently and how do you manage it um i've been fasting for the past past seven years seven to eight years now now brother don't and don't start your first adventure with a seven year adventure <laughs> people might um say you are an age victim <laughs> it is over time like now if i fast it doesn't affect my weight those days if i fast a little my trouser the alignment everything is out of order <laughs> but we are we seem to be more used to it now it's not anything leaving food behind is not anything sometimes the reason why we eat is because we 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 know that the body needs food so we consciously eat because we are living a fasted life uh, this is a calling this is a calling this dimension of fasting straight for seven years it is part of the calling of an intercessor all right it is part of the calling of an intercessor the truth is as each and every one of us begin to discover our gift as, as an apostle by calling I, I can operate in the prophetic I can operate in the evangelistic ministry I can operate in the fivefold ministry but I'm strongest in the teaching ministry that's my strongest grace I'm strongest there every apostle because of the emphasis of your apostolic ministry we have an aspect of the anointing that is strongest my strongest line of anointing is the teaching anointing and I want to tell you that in order for you to adequately fund a teaching anointing spiritually there is a kind of fasting there must be there's a fasting mode that you cannot escape if you want to have an accurate impactful consistent teaching ministry also in the intercessory ministry there is a, a type of fasting that you are going to whether you like it or not if you are going to succeed in that calling the holy ghost is going to push you into that kind of fasting until it becomes a regular thing that you do all right so for about seven years she's been fasting consistently what kind of fast do you do and how long do you normally do it part time so i didn't i didn't start at once i started three days fast but now let us define that fast is it three days six to six or three days started, dry yes i started three days six to six okay three days and six to six the grace came on me to stretch for five days five days six to yes, six six okay. to six then from five days six to six i the grace multiplied i started fasting dry for seven days seven days dry seven days dry yes now it wasn't my audio don't start from seven days dry if you want to do dry go for three days and when you <laughs> when you are done with the three days reach out to us we will now give you some some information on how to recover from that and when next you can go for another adventure this this one the people talking here are masters <laughs> be aware of that all right then they thank you, you started the seven days yes sir. dry so tell us about dry fasting so that, okay like the seven days what's the experience like the, it wasn't really easy but the grace came i had strength to move without being pushed by anybody being encouraged by someone which of the days is normally hardest for you is the third day the third day mm. well the lord will help us <laughs> so is that the highest you have been able to do dry fasting seven days after 
after then mm -hmm. when my son was about going to school yeah i the grace came on me to stretch for a month and i i started the one month fast all right so why i was doing the fast there are sometimes i drive to her house and ask her to stop fasting all right so she started the one month fast to so provide cover for the for the young lad Oi! <laughs> meanwhile this is a young lad shine him shine 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 his face <laughs> i pray that now that most of us are becoming parents that we will have the grace to be able to pray for our children to fast for our children amen god will help us in the name of jesus but you must notice one word there the grace came on her if you try it in the flesh you will end up in an aspect of the hospital maybe i don't know if the intensive care unit we drip so that you can be resuscitated but if there is grace grace makes you to be able to do the supernatural naturally and to do the natural supernaturally so what was the one month experience like the when i started the one month fast in fact the grace was so intense that god was teaching me showing me where places where i could touch that things would go easier for him and spiritually and i was doing those things and i i was really enjoying the fast i felt i didn't feel so so bad the way i used to feel anymore i felt so easy and i was communing with god so it was like the strength was not mine but god supplied the strength now um there is a slogan i have which i would like everybody to know and the slogan says inconsistency lies the power if you wake up today and say okay you wake your wife up and say you want to i want us to begin to pray every night the first night will be so discouraging because the grace will be little and when you finish the prayer that is if you finish the prayer you will have back aches stomach aches and headaches but if you and then satan will meet you at midday and say hey this your prayer is going to make you cripple the way you are going these are symptoms of of arthritis if you overcome that deception and you go for the second day you are going to notice a richer strand of grace a time will come where it becomes a delight and if you don't pray the way you used to pray you are going to begin to feel bad because the holy spirit is going to begin to give you a sensation that he is missing you all right now when those days come it means grace is being administered on a high level if you continue what you think was impossible will become possible so it, it it depends on which line of grace you decide to exercise if you exercise the grace of fasting and prayer you will eventually become a champion if you exercise the grace of bible study and you go beyond the dryness and you are trusting god for a time of communion every time you open the scriptures you will, grace will be released inconsistency lies the power there is nothing you do for god or do with god that doesn't eventually become a delight if you decide to be consistent all right so she's been consistent in the place of fasting and she she's somebody that has authority in this field and that's why i had to allow her to speak now let's get the testimony of an evangelist we have had an intercessor so give him the microphone let him tell us about fasting then you will see that uh, yes you are an evangelist and uh, how do you prepare for your meetings what are the the fasting requirements that is a constant that you need to fulfill in order for you to enter into the shape of your grace effectively 
Praise God. Actually, fasting, he humbles the flesh. <laughs>